10 millimeter, like everything else. The unit, when shipped, comes with a four and a half by 10 millimeter bolt in the back. There's four of them you'll have to remove. They're quite tight, so I suggest an impact. After removing the bolts, there, you will have to remove the plastic sleeve the bolt ran through. Um, they're really hard to get out. The only way I could get them out was with a pair of channel locks. You kind of got to wiggle and try not to break the plastic tabs off of them as you do this. Just take your time and just slowly wiggle back and forth until you get them all out. successfully remove the plastic sleeve look in the packaging and you'll find these four tabs those are to cover your bolt holes they break apart and you just stick them in they have little clips very simple now that we've wrapped up this part of the process let's go ahead and go inside and see what we have to start with Try to fit in here and you'll notice there's a panel on the left hand side with a sticker that says center line for dryer vent. That's where we're going to be drilling our pilot hole. You'll use a number two drill bit here and you'll remove the panel. Behind the paneling on your right will be your hot and cold water lines as well as your drain line for your drain for the washer. Also while you have this panel off I like to use a flashlight and look behind just to make sure that they did not put something in the way that you might drill through such as wires or water lines or something we could possibly damage and have a really bad day. Alright, I just picked up this new kit, the Spider. Get it Lowe's Hardware Carbide. I can always find a place to drill around a hole, so I figured might as well get the kit. So, and here you have it. So for this application, our pipe is going to be four and a quarter. Williams four and a quarter. Four and a quarter it is. It's the outside edge. All right. So we know we need a four and a quarter inch circular drill bit for the outside. Now, as far as where we're going to drill our pilot hole, you need to bring your sleeve inside and make sure that the center line is going to line up in between your trim and your closet wall. In my instance, being that it's a four inch pipe, um, this was not exactly center and I had to move it over half an inch. So I highly suggest bringing your pipe into your closet and making sure you don't have the same problem. Okay, now that we have our new center line, I'm using a 12 inch by 1 16th inch drill bit that I purchased at just a local hardware store. Um, just do your best here. It's a really tight position and it's going to be hard to get a nice level entry point. So if you or anything like me, I started kind of at a slight angle going up and as I went through the first inner wall, I then level out before I go through the exterior. It's about the only way I could figure out how to do it comfortably. Now that we've got our pilot hole drilled, I'm going to go outside real quick and see exactly where it came out while my drill is still in the wall. That way I have a guiding rod to look at and identify exactly where my hole is going to be. And I'll use this pilot hole to start my drilling from the outside in. You always want to drill fiberglass towards what you're working on. If we tried to drill from the inside out, we would blow out the side of the wall and you'd have a really bad mess. As we start to drill the four and a quarter inch hole saw, start slowly. Do not just go wide open because it'll rip across the fiberglass. You need to kind of make a channel. So start slow with the drill and get about a quarter inch deep and just slowly keep drilling and drilling in little sections until you really start to feel it grabbing and biting and then you can go ahead and push through. Um, remember, let the drill bit do all the work, and these things will break your wrist, so hold on tight. This is by far the scariest part of the job, is drilling a hole through your brand new rig. 
Now we're moving right along here. We now have a four and a quarter inch hole through the first inner, the outer wall, excuse me. We now need to drill through the inner wall. You have two choices here. You can go back to the inside for a cleaner drill and drill outside or inside to outside. Or if you let the drill do the work, as I was saying before, you can just slowly let the drill bit do the work and just keep on pushing through. You're not really pushing. You're just kind of letting the drill bit pull you through the interior of the wall if it does happen to blow out some splinters on the inside it doesn't really matter at this point one it's behind your washer and two we're going to have a plastic little flange that will be covering on the inside it covers up the gap as well as um, makes it a stiffer connection that's this plastic piece right here that I just took off the flange. Okay, the next step in this process is we're going to need to take our duct and we're going to have to dry fit it through the wall, get it level, see what it's going to look like. Make sure you wipe off all the dust from drilling and everything. Um, I'm going to slide this through the wall right now and then I'm going to go back inside to see how much pipe I have coming through the wall. You want about an inch to an inch and a half sticking out just for your flant for your vent to mount to the flange um, as we'll see right here in just a second I have here about six inches so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a marker um, just a magic marker just anything really something that will write on metal pipe and then I'm gonna trace it around the wall and right here and I'm gonna leave about an inch around the pipe sticking out further note I'm not sure if you can tell in this video but the pipe is coming in level it's the actual wall is kind of on an angle because the adjacent wall it's going into is at an angle it's actually almost a curve so don't let that freak you out when you pull your pipe out as you see my line right here is kind of a curve but it's all right we're gonna use um, some shears to cut this pipe not everybody has these laying around i just happen to be helping my parents on a job site so i have access to really cool tools at the moment um, you by far do not need these anything will work home depot you can buy a pair of shears just regular that they're probably less than ten dollars um, this piping is so thin i think it's like i don't know 30 gauge or something you probably could cut it with a sharp pair of kitchen scissors so like I said before, I was gonna leave about an inch to a half inch. So I'm gonna stay off my line and just cut it. Once this process is complete, I'll then dry fit. Again, make sure it's all right. And then we'll get to the sealant. Now that we've cut our pipe off and I've already dry fitted, I just edited it out. We're gonna use a silicone. I like to use the DAP 50 year exterior silicone. It's just really good stuff and it's relatively cheap it's about six to seven dollars for a good tube of it and um, seems to hold up really well to weather so I'm gonna put about an inch bead all the way around the pipe where it goes flush against the wall as soon as we set this I'll then level and pre-drill coming up all right now that we have our exterior flange pressed firmly against the outside wall I'm going to use a 1 16th inch just regular metal bit and I'll be using a 1 inch stainless steel pan head screw um, you'll need 8 of the screws total for the installation 4 for the exterior and 4 for the interior the little plastic flange just throw your level up there make sure it's nice and plumb and then we'll pre-drill all four holes holding it level then insert your pan head screws once we've done this, we will go around the outside edge yet again with more of the dab silicone and then wipe off with a damp towel, getting the rest of the residue and then let air dry. All right, we've not now secured the outside flange with the four pan head screws. Now I'm going to take the silicone and just run a nice small, about an eighth inch bead all the way around the exterior of the flange, sealing it to the wall and pretty much stopping any weather penetration possible. Um, just take your finger, rub it in the gaps really well. Make sure you got no air holes 
any cracks, nothing. And then as soon as you're done with this, just take a damp washcloth and wipe off all the residue and the exterior is complete. All right, now we are ready for our interior installation. Grab your vent clamps and your actual dryer vent with flange and get ready to go inside. Um, it's a good time now to grab your hoses, everything you'll need for this installation so you don't have to leave the closet again. What you're gonna wanna do, um, the way my flange worked out is the pipe, the, the dryer vent pipe actually goes into the vent coming through the exterior wall and it's about three inches so I needed to clamp on in between the exterior and interior wall so I had to undo my clamp it's kind of tricky but not impossible um, takes a few minutes um, and remember when you put your clamp on you're just snugging it you don't actually want to crush the pipe until your vent is actually installed Now that we successfully got our clamp attached to in between the walls, I'm now going to install the flange for the interior. You're pretty much just going to slide it on this pipe. You don't have to worry about caulk or anything because we've already caulked from the outside twice. Um, pretty much it's plain and simple. You just slide it on and then use four pan head screws, make sure it's level and attach. Okay, moving along, our interior flange has been installed. I'm going to give it a little tug to make sure it's nice and stiff. I'm also going to switch out to a nut driver right now, which is 5 16 of an inch that I can put on the clamp. So as I slide this dryer vent sleeve in, I'm going to push against it firmly, not really hard, just like so. And then we're going to hold it with one hand, and we're going to make sure our vent clamp is in a position where we can get our drill on it sometimes you have to take a screwdriver and just tighten it up a little bit more snug as I'm doing here just so that the clamp will stay where it's at once you have this in line you can then put your drill on it and crank it down and then it's not going anywhere We now have our dryer vent nice and tight. We've used the impact. We're gonna give it a nice firm tug. The thing is, it's rock solid. That's what we exactly what we're looking for. All right, that was the hard part. Now, by far the most difficult part of this project is moving the washer dryer combo this thing is a good 200 plus pounds and is just awkward there's no way to grip it it's slippery you have to go up multiple flights of steps and then um it's just very difficult and it's a very narrow corridor so watch your wrist because you're going to smash everything you can while you're moving this thing don't forget to uh move your bed up and stable it up if you've changed out your bed like we have to a nectar or a heavier mattress i just use the shelf i took out to prop the bed up to hold it out of the way um, right here is when we realized we measured from the inside of the closet to the inside of the closet the door actually comes over an inch and a half and we didn't measure from the door to the right side of the wall so therefore the washing machine will not fit you will have to remove the door these doors are also solid core so it makes them very heavy um, what i did is i propped the door i just shoved my shoe under it to hold it while i take out the screws so that when i take out the last screw it doesn't bend the hinge food for thought All right, now that we have the washing machine slid almost into position, I tried to line it up perfectly so we can just uplift it straight onto its platform. Now is when we will go ahead and attach the 
water lines those are pretty cut and dry it's just like screwing on a water hose um, we'll get to that right now um, as far as the drain line the drain line on comes with a little rubber grommet on the end of it we figured out real quick it's not in the video once we finally got it installed and turned on the washing machine that the pipe actually when the washing machine started to drain it flooded out of the pipe because there's a trap down at the bottom and you have to get the pipe down to that trap if not it creates an air pocket and will blow water all over the place so don't do the same thing we did take your gray pipe and cut that rubber piece off the end and then slide it all the way down into the pipe to the trap and you will not have the same issue we did all right right now we are installing our hot and cold water lines I did I installed the hot water first because it's the furthest in the back and it's harder to get to the water lines I do plan on switching out just because these ones are ridiculously long they're seven feet long little overkill you really need two footers for this application but it's what we have right now so that's what we're gonna use um, they do have rubber grommets inside each end so you do not need um, plumbers tape for the connection and just snug them pretty tight I used a pair of channel locks um, they are both plastic fittings so you don't want to go crazy tight just enough to crimp that rubber to stop any water from leaking all right right now I'm just snugging everything up I do one water line at a time just convenience it's just easier um, just repeat what you did for hot water that you did for cold water definitely run the water before you slide your machine into the closet what I have noticed Grand Design kind of screwed this up is that once your washing machines in the water box is no longer accessible from the top of the machine so you have to pull the machine out to access the water I really do not like this but that's the way it goes now that we've dry tested our water lines and they're connected and hooked up it's time to install the dryer vent the dryer vent will just slide into it actually slides over the plastic fitting and then you will just use your clamp as before slide it over tighten down and you are good to go it's easy as that now that we are completely hooked up here comes the hardest part of the installation and is actually getting the unit into the closet the only way we could figure out how to do it and trust me we tried multiple ways is I actually had to get into the closet lift it up and then climb out over the machine definitely easier said than done especially when you're 6'3 205 pounds it's not a very big space and was quite comical doing this but um, good luck once you get out from behind the unit and you've almost broken your legs the easiest way I could figure out because you can't just deadlift the unit it's just too heavy you have to kind of lean it on its front and then kind of shimmy it just pushing the front of it towards the back at an angle and then just let the weight of the thing push the vent and everything back against the wall and then after that your installation's complete test run everything make sure it works bolt your door back on and that wraps up the installation you're good to wash some clothes <laughs> So excited, we're actually washing clothes. Yes, it's the small things. Please don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you.